Look, Peta, his car's still there. Maybe they haven't left yet. Quagmire, let me in, you son of a bitch! I'm sorry I'm not home to receive you. The reason being that you have sufficiently scared me away from your wife or daughter. I plan to get help and use better judgment in the future. Wait a minute. So Quagmire just changed all of a sudden? Just like that? You want me to read this or not? No, Grandpa, I don't. No kid wants to be read anything anymore. Computers exist. It's just you won't leave. Okay, where were we? Quagmire's front door. You think they're hiding in there? Oh, no! Peter, look! See you later, suckers! <laughs> oh, good luck to them. Peter! Oh, right, right, let's go! Gonna get up there. I wonder what's causing all this traffic. Oh boy, yep, there's the problem. Not drawn yet. Come on, guys, really? Let's go! What the hell's going on up there? <laughs> so tell the truth. Have you brought other women up here before? Honestly? Two. Really? Yep. I brought the ashes of my third grade teacher, Mrs. Nicholson, and spread them across the lake per her last request. Oh. The other was some skag I met on a dock four miles from here. What? Eh, strike four, Jelly Jellison. The other was my sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice up here. I know. I love the way the fire makes the shadows dance around behind us. One time, my friends and I went camping, and nobody could start a campfire. And then I try to start the campfire, and I could. That's insane. What is going on over here? Are we taking our shirts off now? <laughs> OK, follow the leader. Come on, Peter, hurry. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to that. It's a loon. That's beautiful. You know, we ought to get a cabin up here. Peter, we're wasting time. Quagmire's in there about to have sex with our daughter. That son of a bitch. Why's he... Wait, 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 wait a minute. Do you hear that? I don't hear anything. I know. Isn't it bliss? Peter, let's go! Mmm, thanks for the ice cream, Glenn. And you're right. Somehow it does taste better in my underpants. Yeah, it's like being at the beach, huh? Now get over here while the inside of your mouth is still freezing cold. There you are, you son of a bitch! You get away from my daughter, you pervert! Meg, get in the car. We're going home. I'm not going home! I'm 18, and you can't tell me what to do anymore. Meg, I'm only going to say this once. You may be an adult, but you're still my daughter. And it's my job to protect you from errant wieners. So I don't care how old you are, you're going to do what I say and get in a damn car! Yes, Daddy. If you ever touch my daughter again, I will cut your thing off and feed it to Brian. Okay. And Peter and I get this cabin for one week and a month. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. Peter, I got us the cabin! Yay! I don't want to see your face knocking on our door for at least a month. Would you sign the guest book on your way out? <sighs> Lois Griffin. Peter Griffin. We heard alone. <sighs> you know, Mom and Dad, I'm really glad that you kept me from doing what I was going to do. Well, that's what parents are for, Meg, no matter what age you are. We love you, and we just never want to see you hurt. I only wish I'd seen what was going on from the start like your father did. Well, I know the signs, because the same thing happened to me. An older neighbor. Her name was Elaine. I was 18, and my body was firm from push-ups and sit-ups. I was stunning. But while my body was mature, I had the mind of a 12-year-old. Elaine invited me over with the promise of pie. Little did I know this would lead to an eight-year-long psychosexual entanglement. She's probably dead now. Life's funny sometimes. And scene. <laughs>